Hey everyone, it's Arara, and welcome to Super Mario Sunshine? I know it's everyone's currently subscribed or for just longtime viewers of the channel that this is not what you're expecting, probably. This is not, uh, this is not satisfactory. <laughs> so what's going on? Well, what's, what's this video? What's happening? Well, it's kind of a unofficial, unsponsored, just kind of a representation, um, and showing off of retroachievements.org. For context, I am a lifelong kind of retro fan. I've always enjoyed playing DS games, uh, you know, when they were new, but even especially now, the GameCube is my all-time favorite console, with classics such as Luigi's Mansion, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Sunshine, obviously, Custom Robo, a very tiny hidden gem, awesome game, and like a whole myriad of others, but yeah. My absolute favorite game, pretty much of all time, has got to be Super Mario Sunshine. Except for Satisfactory. And like I do pretty much every year, I had the urge to play this game again. And that's when I saw a video directing me towards retro achievements. Now basically, it, the idea is pretty simple. What if old video games, like prior to the Xbox 360 generation, had achievements? Now personally, I love achievement hunting. So when I heard about this website, I was like, oh my god, this is for me. I'm an achievement hunter, and I like old video games, specifically the GameCube. So I went on the site, made my account, and I started playing Super Mario Sunshine on an emulator. I'd never really emulated any games before, so this was new for me. New territory, for sure. And not long after starting it, I mastered Sunshine. On the website, you get this cool little golden mastery badge for showing that you've got all the achievements on hardcore mode. Which basically means that I got all the achievements playing like it was the actual console itself. No save states are used, no speed up, slow down, none of that stuff. Just straight up playing it like I'm on a uh, original GameCube slash Wii hardware. So then I naturally thought, hmm, <laughs> I should play more Sunshine. So I was looking through the subsets on the site, which are like, you know, regular achievement sets, but for modified patch versions of the game for, uh, you know, specific challenges. And one of them is a challenge that I've always considered doing, but never actually had the gall to try before now. The Super Mario Sunshine Hoverless Challenge, where you beat the whole game without using the hover nozzle, which uh, isn't too bad if you're not trying to 100% the game. Now, I was the 60th person to achieve mastery for the Hoverless subset on Retro Achievements. This means that only 60 people that I know have actually done it, as well as a few YouTubers from, like, streams. I know that a couple people have done it before. Speedrunners, for sure. So why does this video exist? Well, it's not just to glaze up retro achievements of being really cool and awesome and just a kind of a thing that I've been grinding and doing a lot this past month, but this video is going to mainly serve as a guide for how to 100% the hoverless run. Okay, so what do I mean by 100% the run? Well, most of the YouTube videos, challenges, Twitch fraud stuff you'll find on YouTube Twitch, it's all for just beating the game any percent. But the real issue, the real issues come from trying to 100% this subset. So, there are speedrunning tricks out there you gotta learn, for sure. Some of them are slightly difficult, but most of them are pretty easy. Like, I can be kind of a hardcore gamer before. I, like I said, I have achievement hunted. And on my Steam, I have a few dozen completed games. Uh, I'm not like a crazy achievement hunter, like super big into it, but I am growing more fond of the hobby as time goes on. Satisfactory just got achievements in the 1.0 update, so you better believe we'll be covering those uh, shortly. But anyway, without further ado, with no more glazing, no more beating around the bush, how do you go from just beating the game hoverless to 100%ing the game hoverless? Well, I'm not gonna go over every optional shine, that's crazy. Most of them are basically the exact same. But, we're gonna go over a quick rundown of the absolute hardest things to do. And if it isn't covered in this video, that means that you can just do it from out of the box thinking. Like, you gotta figure it out for yourself, but it's not hard and doesn't require some kind of trick, some sort of special maneuver. Even basic gameplay can get you most of the shines and blue coins in this run. So remember, if I don't cover it in this video, that means that it's not that hard to do, you just have to know how to do it through like trial and error. It's just annoying platforming here and there. So the first thing you gotta learn, and this walled me for a long time and was pretty much the last trick that I learned, is the glitchy wall kick, or GWKs. So like I said, I'm not a speedrunner, and I'm not gonna treat you like I'm a speedrunner. I'm not gonna treat you like you know what that means. So basically, you know how when you wall kick, you just go in the opposite direction? You kick off the wall like that? That's how wall kicks are supposed to work. But a glitchy wall kick is a wall kick where you wall kick in the direction of the wall that you're trying to go on. So normally, you'd probably be wondering, how do I get up there? A regular spin jump isn't gonna do it. A triple jump right here at this corner 
the closest possible spot, as far as I can tell, to that that quarter up there. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna cut it. Nothing will, but one thing will. So, you gotta do a glitchy wall kick to get up there. I recommend going for about that spot. And you gotta do fast running. And so this is how it's done. You dive and flip, right here, like that. So you start fast running on the cabana. Basically, when Mario goes up an incline, basically any upward slope, and he flip dives on it, like this, then he'll just start running really fast. I don't know why it works, but it works on pretty much any upward slope. You can try it yourself. So you gotta start fast running. Then you gotta do what I call, I don't know if this is like the actual word for it, but I, I call it a momentum spin jump, where like normally you have no momentum and you just do a spin jump. And it takes you pretty far, pretty good move. But with a momentum spin jump, you build up the momentum, you get the speed, and you can go like that. But the thing is, if you go too fast, you're gonna end up bonking. See that? If you don't hold back and you go too fast with it, you're gonna bonk right into the thing and it's not gonna work. But hey, if you do bonk on it, that means you did do one of the uh, momentum spin jumps I was talking about. So that's, that's, that's the first half, you know? You got the fast running, you got the spin jump down. That's, that's the first half. So then how do you actually pull off the glitchy wall kick once you make it onto, you know, the wall, once you've made contact? Well, instead of putting your all into it, you gotta hold back slightly. Kinda give it, give it some time to chill right there. And then as you approach the wall, pretty much the moment that you would make contact with the wall, you know, when you when you start sliding down, then you want to quickly press the Y button and then the A button in rapid succession. So just like YA, YA, you would kind of want to like roll it with your thumb. In Super Mario Sunshine, whenever you press the Y button, the camera goes directly behind Mario. And you can kind of manipulate this by turning the camera, right? So you can turn yourself however you want like this. But by pretty much instantly buffering a Y press like that, and then pressing A to wall kick off, you will be wall kicking in the direction of, you know, the, your last camera position. And since it's all happening in like an instant, like a split second, the game freaks and is like, wait a minute, we were jumping the way the camera was going. And since you quickly reposition it to be right in front of you like that, but just tapping it really fast, the game's like, oh, we're just gonna keep him going forward, I suppose. Again, I'm not a speedrunner. Perhaps that's totally wrong, but that's what I think is happening when that, when it works. Now, I still have problems doing it myself quite a, quite a bit. I, I can pretty much do it one in every 10 or so attempts. And it might take you a few tries. I'm not perfect with it. See, sometimes I do that, where I do either like the Y press after an accident or like too late or just mess up the timing in general. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, especially for non speedrunners like myself, who just kind of are uh, always known the casual ways to play the game. And learning this was not the simplest. I had to go pretty deep, looking up all sorts of runs for Hoverless until I, f I was able to find good information about how to do this. Well, yeah, you should end up either grabbing on or just landing directly on here if you made it successfully. And it is difficult for sure. For me, I think the hardest part is just getting the spin jump into the, you know, the fast run into the spin jump. Like this, the setup is probably harder than just actually like nailing the trick. But still, sometimes even I, I mess that up, as you see. So yeah, I'm no god at doing this, but that's pretty much all you gotta do. And I, I did it as soon as I said I'm not god at it, but yeah, that's like perfectly what exactly what you wanna do. And we can even break it down further, where it's like right here, as soon as it's about to happen, just YA, instantly. Just YA, 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 YA. It should be about that fast, like how fast I'm speaking, it should happen with your thumb rolling over both. And I know it seems like an impossibility unless you're doing it yourself, it seems so beyond difficult. Like you don't even, like you could never do it yourself. But look at that, I just did it again. You eventually, like even somebody like me, who was really, really scared about trying these tricks and like doing it for myself, you can become fairly consistent with it. Just give it some practice. You can do this. Our next point of contention is gonna take us to Noki Bay. Now Noki Bay for the most part, it's not, that hard, but it's kind of annoying. Now, I personally just parkour my way to most of the blue coins kind of hidden in the walls over there. If you know what I'm talking about, then you know. If you don't know all the blue coin spots, then that's perfectly normal, and you are a sane and well-adjusted human being and not crazy like I am. But if you do know where pretty much all the blue coins are, then, uh, yeah. That was pretty painful. I had to parkour my way up and down the wall a lot, and it kind of sucked. Or you could just get the rocket nozzle, which, uh, ooh. Here's how to do that. 
Now, the reason why getting the rocket nozzle and Noki Bay is so difficult in the hoverless subset is because this is going to require another glitch, another speedrunner kind of trick. I don't know if speedrunners actually use this, but it's called turbo storage. You've probably heard of rocket storage before, but if you haven't, turbo storage is basically the same thing. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment when we go over it. So to get the rocket nozzle, you need the turbo nozzle, but how do you get there? Well, you can get up there and do a spin jump across. I prefer to get into this pond and like time a well, a wall kick just like that. The actual spacing of it can be a little weird. You might need to see like some videos on YouTube and uh, they exist, but basically just try to like stand uh, like here, kind of lined up with this little blue streak of the ground right there in the water. And then you just do a little backflip. There you go. It does take a, a little bit of practice, but I got it down uh, pretty fast. And the turbo nozzle is directly beneath me right here. So this is weird to time. You may need to do this a couple times, but you basically just fall and then try to dive into this room. You'll probably get a blue coin for your first time because it's right there. Oh, and I guess it's not in this mission in particular, so... <laughs> okay, so the mission it's actually in is episode 6. <laughs> the show secret, my bad. But here we go, once more with feeling. Now just dive right in. Grab yourself the turbo nozzle. Consider yourself a winner already, because you've pretty much got the rocket nozzle. And then once you're strapped with your fancy turbo nozzle, you want to parkour your way back up the whole area again. Just go right back to the top. Up to this little pond? I don't know what you'd call this. Probably just like a little pond, right? I don't know. And you got to perform turbo storage. But how do you do that? Well, you got to start sidling, where Mario starts doing this. Where you see how you can only move left and right? To do this, you need to hold down the L button, and then press the X button to switch nozzles. And then once you're doing this, you can, if you're not already on the turbo nozzle, you can just switch back to the turbo nozzle, because that's the one we need. And then let's walk into the little puddle of water, and then just start holding down the turbo nozzle. You're not going to go anywhere, and because you're in a body of water, you're going to keep refilling yourself. And you just need to hold this for a minimum about 45 seconds, I think. I try to do it for about a minute. But 45 seconds to a minute should be more than enough to get you exactly where you need. And so yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so then once a minute has passed, you can start sidling out of the water. Let go of the R button so you stop spraying. And then you just walk off the side and woo way high up we go. Look at that. Look, we are way high up there. Oh. Oh, yeah, maybe I went a bit too high. You want to try to aim for like 50 seconds to a minute, but you got to go over here. You still got to fall in the right spot. Oh, yep. You want to go for that highest spot right here, right here. Maybe even get the coin while you're falling down for finesse. Oh, boom. That is how you do it. I didn't know how to do turbo storage before this, or rocket storage. Now I know how, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a little. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you do turbo storage. And once you got the rocket nozzle, Noki Bay is a piece of cake. You could just get on top of that shell there, rocket nozzle to the last few who are kind of like high up in the cliffs, get those over there, and you should be able to complete the rest of the area with no trouble, or well, maybe a little trouble. The shell secret? Oh god, that that one sucks with the red coins. I oh. But hey, no no tricks are required for that, so I'm not gonna mention secret levels like that anymore. But remember that when you're doing the uh, turbo storage, it, when you're settling off the cliff to just stop firing, that's important to just like, stop firing the water, and then to just keep sidling. Like you want to make sure you sidle off the cliff. You're not just walking normally off the cliff. So that covers glitchy wall kicks, turbo storage. And now we're on to the final bit of contention. And arguably the hardest part. This is the one that I've only ever done once. I've never tried to do it again, cause it's not quick. And it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world either. Mainly because I'm bad at triple jumps, but you'll see. So if you want to even beat this challenge in any percent, there is one, not speedrunner level trick, but Pretty difficult trick that you're gonna have to do at just once. Just once you gotta do this. But it's in the Goopy Inferno. You know, the level where Panther Village is at night and it's totally covered in lava. Well, once you, you know, jump off that tree and make way over here, then you get your flood pack back. But without the hover nozzle, how are you gonna get on that mushroom? 
It's so wide and you can't do any weird backflips or kickflips off of it. It's it's hard to get up there. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna line up a triple jump so you're doing like a you see this little black dot right here on the wood? I try to like line Mario up with that. Turn the camera to like about here-ish, somewhere in this zone, from like there to there. Really, you just gotta keep doing this experiment, but you gotta time it so that you jump, double jump, triple jump. Yeah, see, I still have a hard time timing just the triple jump part of it. But hey, you can do it from this angle or this angle, and you know, on Goopy Inferno, these guys won't be in the way dancing, but you can jump from this side too. Again, try to line yourself up with the corner over here, and then just do like a one, two, three. Oh, so you wanna bounce off of here for the triple, or here. Pretty much aligned with the corners. And then, the second that you've confirmed you started the triple jump, no, actually, always assuming you've already hit the triple jump, you need to immediately go into Y cam and then turn. But from what I can tell and what I've learned is that you don't want to turn the camera in like a bottom right or like angled kind of way. If you're gonna turn the camera in the Y cam for this trick, you want to be holding your, your control stick as far to the right as possible, but only the right. Like, not down into the right, not up into the right, but just the right. Because look, this is what happens when I'm pointing it down to the right. You know, kind of like at a 45 degree angle. It's not exactly what we're looking for. But this is what happens when you hold it only right. You just turn. You sharply just turn on a dime. That's exactly what you want. You don't want to turn like this. You don't want to turn like this. You want to turn like this. So, always assume that you've hit the triple jump. And before you even take off, I would say, press the Y button, go into, go into the Y cam, and just turn. Turn to the right as fast as you can without angling it. And if you do it all right, it should look something like this. Oh, there we go! I actually hit it a second time! That's exactly what you're looking for. Now, both times that I've done it have been facing this angle, you know, like this way. And if you want to just freeze frame, slow that down, roll it back, whatever you want, I got it right here for you in this easy guide video. You don't got to look at Eddie's particular, like, super long twitch thought and find the right moment. You don't got to look at specific other things and, like, all sorts of... You don't got to scour the whole internet. This is the video for the hoverless subset. Fuck you, I've done it for two times now, and you're welcome. And yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. I mean, triple jumping is not new, it's not crazy. You just gotta line it up, time it just right. And my biggest tip with triple jumping is that if you stop holding forward on the control stick, uh, you can actually, like, pull yourself back a bit. Like, Mario is pretty controllable in the air. Like, so if I jump and I just, like, hold back, I make it, like, there. But if I jump and keep holding forward, I can make it all the way off and, so, like I saw, I nearly fall off the thing. So if you're just trying to make it onto the corner specifically and you're having a hard time, you keep finding yourself like jumping like way over it, you know, like this, <laughs> then just hold back a little. I promise it will help. Not too much, obviously, but you know, gotta find that right balance, gotta practice putting your hours. I think to do this the first time, it took me like two hours to do. To be fair, I didn't... I didn't know this, the spinning camera thing. I was still holding it kind of like this, and that was throwing me off big time. But yeah, just keep trying. Like I said, with all these tricks, they could be a little annoying, but with practice, you got this. You got this. And now finally, the final area where you gotta do glitchy wall kicks, and the final like hurdle, is Pianta 8. Pianta Village 8, that is. The Fluff Festival coin hunt, because you can't get the rocket nozzle here to get the last coin up there unless you get on top of this tree. And the only way to do so involves using two glitchy wall kicks. And because of the secret shine up there, you know, the uh, the hidden Pianta Village shine where you spray the sun, you gotta get up there again, so you have to do it four times in this level. So you gotta get kinda good at doing the GWK. How I always do it is I, I go over to this leaf in particular, because if you mess up the, the glitchy wall kick on this leaf, then you probably will just fall off the tree. But if you mess it up on this leaf, then you get another chance, because you'll pretty much just wall kick back onto the tree. So pretty much, to get up here, this is where you gotta do the first one. Just gotta do a fast spin jump, like that. And there you go. Not perfect, but I still did it enough to grab on, you know? So that's one. 
And for those next two jumps, you can just do regular spin jumps. You kind of have to pull back a little bit. Don't get too close. Give yourself enough space. I see I still messed it up there. But yeah, you can clear those pretty simply with just regular spin jumps. And here's where the other GWK is going to come in. And there we go. Got the rocket nozzle. So yeah, that's two GWKs for the regular uh, Mission 8, as well as the Secret Shine, and then one for the Serena Beach, so you gotta do five in total, minimum. I ended up having to do like 11, because a couple times after getting the rocket nozzle, I would go down for the red coin beneath the village and just die. That can be a little tricky to get to, but like I said, no tricks involved, it's just... Gotta figure it out. <laughs> No guide can really help you with that, because, like I said, not a lot of the hoverless guides do a max percent, or like, you know, 120 shines. So you just gotta figure it out like the rest of us. I will say, though, what I did is just kind of like jumping off the bridge here, and just praying getting lucky with the timing. And as far as I can tell, that's all that's really to it. I mean, Corona Mountain can be a little rough, because you gotta do four long momentum spin jumps in a row at the right at the start, which is really rough. Really, really rough. But hey... There's tons of footage of people doing it out there. You gotta do it to even complete the base run that's not even in max percent. So, it's not part of this video. It took me a little over three days to beat the whole hoverless subset. And that may not sound like a lot of time, but all I do is play video games, so... <laughs> Man, it was frustrating, especially the ending here at Corona Mountain. But if there's one thing you can take away from this video, it's that I believe in you. You got this. Just play Sunshine, and if you're passionate enough about it, about this game, about beating the subset, then you can do it. You will do it. If not, then you'll burn in flames in hell forever because you suck. No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, just um, I hope this helped. I tried to make it as compact and as precise with the information as possible because I literally could not find this information in one nice compact area together. These are all the tricks and hard parts that like the literally the hardest parts of the run. I had to reduplicate it all myself. I didn't want to use anyone else's footage. So, yeah, I hope that this helps. You know, if you're just trying to do the 120 shines hoverless, uh, yeah, here you go. That's how you do it, all right? I've been Red Fox Rara. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, which will probably be the satisfactory video, okay? Until then, I'll see you later. Bye.